A Republican stronghold that's been red for over 40 years has officially turned blue. Orange County now has more registered Democrats than Republicans. The Los Angeles Times looked at voter statistics. Melanie Mason co-wrote that article. She's a staff writer at the LA Times. Melanie, welcome. Thanks so much for joining us. So why is this happening in Orange County now? Well, I think that this is actually a lagging indicator of what we've seen from voter behavior over the past couple cycles. Uh, this area actually voted for Hillary Clinton in 2016 in the presidential race. And then we saw in 2018 in the midterms, there were four congressional districts that flipped from red to blue. So now we sort of have the official designation through voter registration statistics, but it really just confirms the voter behavior that we've been seeing over the last few years. It's still pretty close there, though. So how could this have national implications for the Republican Party? Well, I think that what we're looking at is look at what caused Orange County to flip. And part of that is changes in demographics. Um, Orange County became much more diverse. There are large Latino and Asian American populations there. But we also saw in a lot of suburban areas in the county, um, there was a change from uh, from red to blue. Typically, Republican, moderate Republican voters uh, have been moving to the Democratic Party. And there's a lot of speculation that that may be a reaction to President Trump and sort of the tone that we've seen uh, from him. And so, of course, then to extrapolate out from there, there are a lot of suburban areas uh, throughout the country, particularly in red states, where uh, politicos are thinking, hey, this might be happening here. So we're seeing this now uh, in suburban areas of Texas, for example, uh, or in Georgia. The same phenomena could be happening. Right. So you're saying that this is a suburban trend. Where else are you seeing this in Los Angeles in those typically, you know, strong Republican areas? I think that in the sort of outskirts of Los Angeles, basically what we've seen is that the core of L.A. Uh, and, and a lot of cities uh, in California and throughout the country, those have always been Democratic strongholds. But particularly as housing has gotten more expensive, uh, you see people who um, were living in the city sort of pushing more outward. And with that, they're bringing their Democratic politics. Uh, so, for example, in sort of the Palmdale region right outside of Los Angeles, uh, that you had a Republican, Steve Knight, that represented it in 2018. And then he lost to Democrat uh, Katie Hill, who's now actually um, a freshman member uh, of Congress and a very high profile one of that. Um, and so I think that both here in Southern California, uh, but then in sort of regions nationwide, you're seeing this sort of democratic um, strongholds now pushing out as the urban cores become really expensive for people to live in. Does this sort of signal the end or at least the passing of a certain type of, you know, Reagan Republican, California Reagan Republican, the sort of old school wasp image that you think of when you used to think of Orange County, you're saying the demographics are changing. Does that mean that that sort of that's dissipating? I think the question is, is, is that gone forever or is that a cycle? Right. Um, so um, my, my colleague Sima Mehta and I both spoke to people who have lived in the region for a long time. And some say, you know, there's really sort of a, a, a sort of permanent rupture, to say, with the Republican Party, that the Republican Party has changed so much and the demographics um, of these areas have changed so much that they might be incompatible forever. Um, but I spoke to other people who said, you know, this might just be a specific moment and particularly a Trump specific moment, mm -hmm. uh, and that you could perhaps see a moderate Republican, one who's maybe a little bit less bombastic on issues of immigration uh, and more sort of moderate when it comes to uh, economic fiscal conservatism, that could scoop up those voters again. Mm -hmm. So I think the big question is, 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 is the Republican Party going to continue on its current trajectory, which seems to alienate these particular voters, or do you see kind of a more chamber of commerce, country club, uh, moderate Republican return to power and bring those voters back in? So do you think Think that that's what would have to happen to flip at least Orange County and some of these areas we're talking about red again. I think that that is going to be a key. I think tone really matters um, with, with these voters. Uh, one of the things that I found, not just in Orange County, but in suburban districts across the country, is there seems to be a real exhaustion with the tone of politics these days. I was just in Dallas last week where I was speaking to Republican women um, who were turned off by sort of the, the tone that they're seeing from the National Republican Party, um, but see it said that they're not Democrats and certainly are looking for fiscal conservatives. And so you could really see a lane for somebody either in 2020 or in the future 
easier to to scoop up those voters, not necessarily by having a Democratic Party label affixed to them, um, but by speaking to some of these more moderate, centrist, or even fiscally conservative principles. Um, but I think that a lot of that depends on what the sort of uh, general tone of the Republican Party is. Right. I think overall what we've seen from Orange County is that Republicans really have a brand problem there, and that really stems from the White House on down. Right. But there are voters, like you said, they're conservative, fiscally conservative, perhaps, you know, socially libertarian voters who are searching for a candidate or just waiting for a candidate that appeals to them. Very interesting stuff. Melanie Mason, thank you so much. Thanks for having me.